Welcome everybody to another episode of my podcast, which is Journey to Lifestyle Freedom. And the goal of what uh, the goal of this podcast uh, or the entire podcast is really it's not to preach, it's not to tell you, you know, tell you what you should be doing. It's really about I wanted to make it because it was really like I wanted to document my journey. Yeah. Meeting cool people like James. Uh, and just just kind of documenting like conversations, deeper conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, I love being like getting connected with like higher level thinkers, if you will. Uh, not to say that there's lower level thinkers, but just like like the stuff that I resonate with, right? Is what yeah. kind of what I mean. And yeah, like through these deep conversations, I want to capture that. I want to capture it in like. You know whether it's journaling but how cool is it to do it on video or audio um so yeah so that's kind of like our goal but um thank you for for doing this oh yeah james and so my guest today is james he's a registered dietitian yeah live in orange county yeah been doing this for a while very knowledgeable in gut health microbiome functional medicine nutrition I try I try every day oh, yeah. so yeah but James let me just tell us your story tell yeah. us about yourself well see so, yeah so I'm James Marin I'm a holistic registered dietitian environmental nutritionist so that's one thing we really we were talking before about kind of going outside of even your schooling and that's one thing I really did more conferences and seminars and looking at PubMed and reading books and looking into the environmental factors that then affect our body um, but yeah and then so we have an office in Newport Beach California uh, both my wife and I are dietitians and we're more on the holistic functional side of that realm um, my story just began as a really sick unhealthy kid I was morbidly obese I was eating sugar oh, wow. every meal of the day grew up you know what middle class I guess you know um, no complaints there, but really growing up in the early 90s of Pop-Tarts and cereal and just eating <laughs> junk. I don't even know how I'm alive uh, to this day. <laughs> just like, where, where are my nutrients coming from? Um, but yeah, it really developed into um, having health issues and, and then uh, really something just clicked into my mind of like, this is not the way, you know, this is not the way to eat. This is not the way to function. I don't feel good. Um, and then I, I did have an injury in high school, which led me to uh, going to physical therapy. And it was in physical therapy. I was like, oh, this is cool. They're teaching you to be healthy. They're teaching about movement, about the body. I want to be a physical therapist. So I went on that journey. Oh, wow. was actually going to school for physical therapy. And then in I was a physical therapy aide while I was in my undergrad and then started finding myself, I was talking more about nutrition. I was like, hey, did you know this nutrient does this? And you, you maybe try eating this and talking with some of the patients that are more about nutrition. And then ended up finding, wow, I, I really love nutrition. I'm really seeing that as the root. And it was kind of like peeling an onion. You know, you're seeing one layer and then you go deeper and you go deeper. And then you're finding these roots to a lot of people's ailments. So. I, then that's that's where I ended up going to school for nutrition and dietetics and graduate with a degree and then went on this crazy journey yeah in the profession but yeah that's, that's awesome kind of the, this, the quick synopsis of it but yeah that's, that's funny I I also was a, a PT aide as well really and yeah. I wanted to do physical therapy because I, I didn't want to I didn't want to work like I, I was like oh, I don't want to this was in high school. I was like, I, I don't want to uh, work like at nine to five. I mean, not nine yeah. to five, but I didn't want to like have a cubicle job. I didn't. Right. I didn't want to sit. I just didn't want to sit and desk like, job on the computer. Yeah. Right. So I was like, what can I do that's physical? That's mm-hmm. you know, because I was like pretty active. I was an athlete. You you talked to you played football, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh well, physical therapy. Right. <laughs> and I um I saw that. Uh, or I went to uh, volunteer at, at a at the VA hospital. This mm-hmm. was in San Francisco Veterans uh, Hospital, and I volunteered there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so this is what physical therapy is. It's really just 
getting people out of bed after surgery and walking them like a lap mm -hmm. and that was it and I was like maybe I ought to rethink you know right. going through uh, but they said well there's many different types and people do different things like there's wound healing I didn't even know about that wound healing and physical therapy obviously there's sports and athletics which is what I wanted to do mm -hmm. there's like inpatient care outpatient um, just many different avenues um, but same thing like you, I, w I, I was a, uh, in, in college, I was working in the physical therapy department at mm -hmm. school at this health center. And I'm like, this is cool. You know, I'm like doing the motions. I'm like teaching right. people how to like rehab, um, all the like different stretches. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're doing PNF, we're doing all this stuff. And then it was sort of like, there was, I just felt like there was something missing. Right. Um, and I didn't want to like always do that. For, I just wanted something more. I wanted more performance-based. Yeah. Um, I started training people, mm -hmm. actually. And then uh, and then I, I was like, I don't want to be a trainer. Well, I, I was like, you know, this is like, I wanted to do more. I wanted to do more like nutrition because mm -hmm. I, was, I was also a nutrition minor as well. Uh, and I was thinking about doing dietetics and I did a bunch of like I did my own like stuff I started learning a lot on my own yeah. different certifications and nutrition really like diving down that rabbit hole um, and then at the end of when I was graduating I didn't know what to do yeah and then I was like well like, should I go back to physical therapy but if I go back to physical therapy I couldn't really do nutrition I don't know how the laws are now, but I just know yeah, that it's interesting. there's a lot more like restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, like I chose chiropractic because they were like, yeah, you can do nutrition. You can also diagnose, you mm -hmm. can order labs, you can do imaging, you're mm -hmm. a primary care physician, mm -hmm. you're looking at things holistically. And I'm like, yes, that all makes sense. Right. So I went in. Um, and I just thought I was going to be like a Cairo adjusting people and doing soft tissue work. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I learned all about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and your skill set now is, is so impressive. I just got the, the full treatment, <laughs> I think. You. And it, it was just, I mean, it is. And that's what I love is, is connecting these dots. And, and we see it in, in, I think, organizations and people, but even these, these body or physical concepts of like we're all little droplets of water and we put it together it makes like a beautiful mm. and powerful body of water and it's like whoa and connecting oh what physically hurts with what emotionally hurts or what neurologically hurts that it, it's just like duh it's like yes we should yeah. be doing that and that's I love it I got to see it firsthand it was it that's was awesome. amazing I loved it appreciate it yeah yeah so tell me like now that now that after you got gone through like your dietetics program, yeah, like what was next? What happened then? Yeah, so after uh, yeah, so not many people know. I think about what what a registered dietitian is. I would say mm -hmm. on average, you know, you hear nutritionist, clinical nutritionist, health coach, dietitian. You know, there's all these different different names, yeah, right? So let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah. So so what's a registered dietitian? So a registered dietitian is someone who has an undergrad degree in a, a dietetic program. Um, so it's typically like food, so ours official is food and nutrition with a dietetics emphasis, right? So you do your undergrad, then you have to get into a dietetic internship. This is, this is the hard part. So it's like once you graduate, now you, there's only so many in the country. I think there's more online now or more like a distance, but that's a lot of hard work. You gotta basically develop it yourself. So, Everyone's fighting to get into a physical, uh, you know, physical location to go do a dietetic internship. Um, so interview for that, you have to apply. It's this whole process. Um, you 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 like get uh, you're on a registry. So whatever you pick, if they don't pick you and you mismatch, you're not getting in. Oh, so wow. it's kind of a game of you have to pick ones, and then when you interview, you better hope one of those pick you so you can match up. Oh, wow. Right? So on top of all this competition, then you have to kind <laughs> of match. So there's all this stuff, so it's very stressful. Um, but that's essentially like a, like a doctor kind of doing their rounds, right, before they're actually 
done and then ready to practice. So we do a certain amount of hours in various settings. So school service, our food service, yeah. public health, clinical. So we do all the rounds for like a whole year and just learning, absorbing. Um, so once you are done with your dietetic internship, then you are able to take the accredited diet, registered dietetic exam, wow. and then you become a registered dietitian. So that's the process. Oh so that's, that's what it was. So it's after tedious. undergrad, tedious stuff. Yeah, I mean, not the worst, but, but I really loved it because it was a little bit more. It was like, yeah, I had that same, like, what do I do? What do I want to do? And, and being a registered dietitian, I was like, oh, cool, cool. I don't want to be in school forever. This seems like a, a good amount of school. And then it'll, it'll give me the option to then get in the real world, start, you know, getting some hands-on experience and still learning from there. Yeah. Um, and for me, really, like, the way I thought of it was I didn't want to be in school. I was like, I could continue to get my master's or PhD or, or do something, which I still might do. But for me, I always had it in my mind of like, if I could just get to work, I want to, you know, I, I always feel like there is this, um, this prestige with like, okay, I'm James Marin, RD, uh, M M P H P H D, you know all the alphabet soup, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Ugh. I was like, you know, I could save a lot of money and time. What I'm gonna do instead is just I'm gonna start a bunch of cool stuff. So I'll be James Marin, R D E N, co-founder of blah blah blah, founder of this, da da da, and and that'll give me the same kind of weight. I always feel. Oh yeah. Right, because I feel like experience, you know, will equal schooling in some sense. If so, not more. If not more. So I went that route. I was like, I was like, you know what? That's great. I have nothing against schooling, but I felt drawn to that. Yeah. And that's and that's kind of what I've done, and even what I'm still building and working on. Yeah. yeah. So with with that with the being a co-founder um, yeah. and doing obviously having to learn about business yeah. now, entrepreneurship, oh, yeah. which is something that people in the science field. Never learned about like chiropractic school. I had like I think one course on it, and it was like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was out of nowhere. Um, and I think schooling, like traditional schooling, really pushes you to become this like employee. Yes. And That's rather right. than uh, think outside the box, like you said, like you just thought outside the box, which is right. so cool, and like hey, I can be a founder. Instead of being like, quote unquote, like smart, right. you know, on paper, mm -hmm. I can be like practical. I can, I can start stuff. I can be, I can do and take action right. and, you know, build big organizations. Yeah. Um, was that kind of like your goal? Like where was, like, where, what was your goal? Like of doing, doing all yeah. of that, like being a co-founder and being, you know, getting business savvy. Right, yeah, and I, and I didn't know what it was then, but I just always had, it was something of like, I want to do, I don't want to just, yeah, like you said, be smart on paper or have, cool, I got another degree, that's great, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I always said, I just want to do, I just want to do, and, and from the first time I started school, I was like, I, I would want to have some type of holistic health center. Mm. I envisioned, you know, back then it was grandiose ideas, of like, <laughs> we're going to have this really great like organic cafe and like a yes. rooftop garden and it's going to be this integrated and I always dreamed of that and now it's like you know fast forward to where I am now it's like whoa I, I can actually achieve that mm. and but it, you know I think I think at a younger age like oh yeah this will happen in like five years whereas in reality it's, it's been like you know maybe 10 to 12 years right, right. And, that, and that's that's fine because yeah. you learn and you grow and you are developing the skills to then be prepared when that time comes but um yeah now like uh, i mentioned to you we're adding more providers we're rebranding into a, a bigger kind of more integrated practice um we're, ha we're having partners in the community and regenerative agriculture so we're getting the community aware of like soil health and and where your food is coming from which has been a movement ongoing but i think linking it to the gut microbiome um, I was just reading a study last night, actually, that was basically saying how, how like, oh yeah, we're finding out a lot of our microbiome comes from the soil microbiome. It's like, duh, like, okay. Um, I think a lot of people have been saying that, but we're now seeing it in studies you can find on PubMed, right? right. So 
it's just connecting all these dots and it, it's just so beautiful to do that and then and had I not taken action as early as I did I wouldn't be here where I am today maybe it would have been 10 years from now but so I'm so grateful for that yeah I, I love that did you envision yourself kind of like doing what you're doing now um, or like you you talked about this grandiose clip and by the way uh-huh. like I I have that too like I have yeah. this ultimate vision of what I call the Costco warehouse size holistic true oh, like holistic care um, not just holistic but like I call it everything under the Sun yes I love that and that's what it stands for everything under the Sun because um, like why why because it's mm-hmm. if you're like you know this may sound bad but if you're dying right you don't care about anything you're gonna be like do you give give me everything under the sun <laughs> to keep me I'll, alive to keep me alive <laughs> right yeah. so oh, it was sort of like you know and we understand this that when when in desperate times desperate measures but it's sort of like well let's take that concept and apply it to everyday life, mm-hmm. you know, and and have everything under the sun mm-hmm. to not now, not 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 help you survive, but thrive. Yes. But take you to the next level. Right. And I think um, that's sort of like where this whole like lifestyle freedom mm-hmm. came from. And you know, just going into what you were saying about like yeah, like you envision like a culture of you know, you have like. The, the people are growing their food and the, the rooftop like yeah, gardens and yeah. it's like all of this is like I see um, a lifestyle mm-hmm. right like it's a way of living yeah. right that's lifestyle it's a way of life that mm-hmm. provides uh, gives you like the confidence gives you the uh, the ability to you know support yourself be healthy mm-hmm. be at your your best Right. whether it's your health right mm-hmm. whether it's your your just emotional state right. um, whether it's your your wealth right ideally right okay. but like having all of that is like I see as like freedom and even and then even going deeper with that like what is wealth right and we've even been manipulated on what wealth is right and what is yeah. success and I think I think a lot, especially the younger generation who's on TikTok and YouTube, and like I want to be a YouTuber because I want to make lots of money and and this I want to buy the newest Tesla and, and it's even questioning what is wealth because yeah. to me I have friends who are farmers who don't make that much money who aren't flashy but they are so wealthy to me where they get to go out in their permaculture like food forest in their backyard or on their on their little whatever it's like a quarter of an acre but it looks like a forest and they get to just pick mangoes and pick you know figs and just they have like 20 or 50 different varieties of of different fresh herbs they can pick that day like man you're so wealthy like to me that is wealth right Yeah, yeah and so it's even reframing this idea of wealth where it's like Great, have have monetary wealth, great. Right. But what about this this abundance of food? What about fresh water? What about your fresh air? What about your mental health? What about I mean to me all that as wealth as well. Yes. So, yes. But so I think that's totally what you mean, but but letting people know that where it's not just I'm gonna make lots of money. I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm gonna have this true, tangible wealth. It's so important. It is. Yeah. It is. And I, I and I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Um, and it makes perfect sense. Because it's like, you know, so what if you have money? I always say this. It's like, so yeah. what if you have money, right? Uh, or some people will always be like, oh, you're always talking about wealth. What do you mean? And I, I always explain to them, wealth is like, you know, there's like the rich, right? right? Which is like, yes, you're having a lot of money. But I think of like wealthy as in like time. Yeah, not time. necessarily like how much money you have. Right. Now, certainly, if you have a bunch of money, you can offset your time because you have more time to do whatever you want. Because you got you got money in the bank, you got passive income, so you don't have to work as right. much, right? right. So, um, but for those of us who are lucky and we're kind of serving our life purpose, we don't right. see it as work. We just see it as like this is our purpose. Yeah. But anyways, going back to wealth as time is yeah. like, you know, like. 
you know, for, for us, we're, rel- we're still relatively young, but like to like an 80 year old, it's kind of like who's wealthier. Right. You know, technically we are we because are. we have more time oh, yeah. on our side. Oh, yeah. And I think uh, at the end of the day, people want, want more time. Oh, um, totally. Always. And so, like you said, but then like now that begs the question of like, okay, so what if you have more time, more quantity? Mm-hmm. What about the quality of your life? Right. Right. And that's what you're saying is like, all oh, fresh water, fresh food, you yeah. know, like a uh, great emotional state um, relationships are good. Mm-hmm. You know, this planet is like, everyone's helping each other. There's like a, uh, you know, we form like tribes and communities and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like back in the day, right? If you yeah. think about it, like the ideal culture. Right. Um, and it's, and it's, yeah, it's, it's profound. I don't know if we're ever going to get there. I know. It's like, oh, I, I know when, uh, when I talk to my wife, like, really openly, and, and we're, I'm talking about all these, like, ideas, and we talk about, go in depth about life and what life is, and I, I hear her kind of say, like, oh, you're talking about, like, a utopia. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, why couldn't we? I mean, we could. It might take a lot of time, but it could be a possibility of this really beautiful world we create where we finally realize, like, Oh, all this, all these pesticides we're inputting into our crops. We really didn't need to do that. Oops, nature already had the answer. We just had to let, we just kind of had to let nature give us the answer and us be willing to accept that answer and use it, right? Um, just it's all these different things. So I think I think eventually we'll get there. I'm, I'm always optimistic. I'm an optimist for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think time, like, and going back to that time, I think. It's us being patient for that. Mm. It's being, again, I would love, I would love for this to happen in my lifetime. It's probably not, and I'm okay with that. But I'm planting seeds yeah. for the future. I'm planting seeds, and I'm building things for my daughter and her daughter, or her son, and not not expecting it to happen in my lifetime. And I think more people need to do that. That's amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, it's um, it's it's really. It, it's powerful because you you're like saying I'm planting seeds now, mm-hmm. but I'm expecting no result from it. I'm not right. expecting myself to, uh, or expecting like me to eat off of like what I've just planted. I'm right. expecting like other people to, right. to other generations to, yeah. and so I guess in a in a selfish sense, which mm-hmm. is important too. We have to think about ourselves. Yeah. Like how does um, like how do you, how do you feed that? Like how do you feed like your your own like selfish needs? I know, right? I, I think I do. I, I get fed for sure. Like I, I still do cool things. Like I I built businesses and I get to I get to see those kind of manifest and and collaborate. Even like we're collaborating, and yeah. so that that feeds me for sure. But I always I, th- I think a big portion of it as I kind of see it as planting seeds um, so I don't know I mean I, I for sure get fed and I think it's important you have to um, but I don't know I think that that is the big question how do you balance that yeah but I think more importantly if you feel like you're not planting seeds how do you start I think that is so important and you, and you see this I even see this in people with the best intentions who are like I'm the I'm the biggest Christian or they're not saying that but you right. know they're like I'm praying, you know, they're the biggest Christian. They're just like, and that's the parable, right? Like, um, you you are planting seeds to eat the fruit. But what? Why do you have to eat all the fruit for yourself, right? right. And I right. and I've seen some of these, and not not to pick on Christianity, but other religions as well, where it's like, um, oh, I'm not going to recycle because the world's going to end, and and <laughs> Jesus will come, and it doesn't. I've heard I've heard people say that, and I'm like. What are you talking about? Like, yeah. so you're just not going to care about the earth because the Bi- you've you've understood from the Bible that the world's going to end and it's not a big deal. Like that makes no sense. So, you know, I think it's important to kind of clarify this and be like, no, you need to be planting seeds because it's it's beyond you. You're you're a speck in time and there's something bigger going on. But yeah. That's where we're getting pretty deep, but that, yeah, no, but, that's no, so yeah, that's yeah. so deep. That's yeah. so deep, and I think uh, I just hope, like you know, <laughs> and I don't think you mean like any disrespect to religion. Yeah, as well. I mean, I, I grew up in a Protestant Christian. I right. consider myself a Christian, I guess, but yeah. um, 
yeah, no disrespect to that. That was just an example, but yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, and I, yeah, and I'd say it's um, it's when we think about yeah, like that concept of you know, like oh, the world's gonna end and there's gonna be a happier place as long as you you know resolve all your sins right. and, and 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 pray and and, and repent or. You know, I forget the right terms, but it's like as long as you ask for forgiveness, you know, you'll be good and you'll be in heaven. And sort of like, you know, again, it's sort of like, you know, I'll be in heaven, but like other We're, people are living in hell. Right, right. <laughs> like, it's we, so, if we, anything, I'm like, wow, that's the most selfish thing I've ever heard, it, right? Yes. Like, so you're just going to like not care be like, forgive me, go to heaven and say, well, screw it for everyone else still on it. It's right. like, wow, that's the most unchristian thing I would assume you could do, right? right. So and it, that's always been so odd to me. And I remember the first time I, I heard that, I was like, that, that doesn't seem right. I was like, that, that's not right. So that yeah. was funny. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it is. And no matter what you're doing, just thinking beyond yourself, right? I think that's the overall theme. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, and transcending time. That, that's a really good way to transcend time is, is not thinking about yourself, mm. right? And I think, I think we have it backwards. I think people are always like, I got to leave a legacy. I got to do this so people remember me. And, they got, and you're thinking about yourself, but really I feel like to live on is not thinking about yourself. Wow. Right? I mean, I don't know. No, that's that's deep. Yes, yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Because we do have this like twisted idea of like leaving a legacy. And this is probably mm -hmm. one of the first times that I've heard it or it's landed for me. Mm -hmm. Like, because I've always would think like, oh, yes, like what am I doing to like leave a legacy, mm -hmm. um, kind of like impact the world, mm -hmm. you know. And in those terms, I'm like looking like, not necessarily like to be recognized, but then to, yeah, like how do you impact the world for a better place so that you right. leave it better than you found it? Um, but that's what you're saying is like you can trend, you can transcend, you can, mm -hmm. like, you will still live on your efforts, your doing will still live on forever. Right. Your you know your goodness and kindness mm -hmm. for the world still lives on forever as long as you put in the motion to, right. to to do it you know yeah man and and that's that's cool and what's trippy is it it's just like a tree right it's yes. just like a tree once you planted that tree and then it's still it's it's gonna bear fruit more seeds and keep planting tree, right it's like a it's a ripple effect in, in that time it is a ripple effect it's like a continuum that that's really cool it is yeah. I, I call that one of my mentors. Um, mm -hmm. He calls that uh, death of vision. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you kind of heard heard that before, no. but like for example, like death of vision, mm -hmm. right? If I tell you about, think of an uh, think of an acorn. Yeah. You know, and some people have probably heard this from from many different places, but if you think about an acorn mm -hmm. and you use death of vision, mm -hmm. like what do you see? So, you're, so like death of vision, meaning yeah. like you're like a like death. Oh, okay. So like seeing further down the road, kind of thing. Oh, of the acorn. Yes, so like you see like what it becomes. Yeah, like, yeah what it right, becomes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like if I tell ask you like, um, like if you see an acorn, mm -hmm. like what do you see? Yeah, you, you'd see a big tree in one day, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then so like what I've learned is like. Um, I think Kevin Trudeau says this is like mm. uh, see an acorn. It's like that's not. Uh, I'll tell you what I see. I see a forest. Right. So what do you see? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. I totally I believe that. That's yeah. yeah. That's exactly. And then you can go further and be like, well, like I don't just see a forest. I see like a civilization. Mm. I see a city. I see an mm. urban culture. And what I'm seeing is people are uh, building like houses, building mm. buildings, mm -hmm. and they're using the wood came right. from the tree that came from the acorn 
ultimately. Right. Right. And then I'm seeing like, okay, like now like food, mm -hmm. food from the forest coming in, feeding the people. Yeah, all the thriving animals, and the animals. Yeah. Yeah, and just a thriving economy, right? People are trading like wood, trading, you know, fruit, trading whatever the forest, whatever nature brings. Right? And then it's like this whole like civilization that's oh, happening <laughs> from an acorn. Right. From an acorn. Right. And so that's like uh that's kinda like and I guess that's what you're saying is like yeah. You know, here you are planting a seed, mm -hmm. doing, you know, doing the things that you're doing and for your, for the next generation, right? For your daughter's next generation. Right. Yeah, man, that's exact. I don't know if I had a name, but yeah, that's cool. That's exact concept, I think. And even, and that's where it even goes where people, and I've had family members and patients and friends, oh, well, what's that going to do? You know, these little micro changes or whatever people's ready for, these little tweaks you can do in your life. Oh, what, you know, what good is that going to do? And it's like, I, you can go back to that analogy of like, it's an acorn. You may think it's, well, look at this tiny little insignificant acorn, but it's how you view it, right? right. It's that depth of a vision of like, well, I see a forest, I see a thriving ecosystem, I see a thriving economy just from that little thing. Yes. And this little thing could be like, I'm going to start walking. I'm going to take deep breaths, you know. I'm going to eat more plants, right? So it's like, that that's the entire concept right there. That's awesome. It's so powerful. That's awesome. And yeah. so, I mean, growing up for you, I want to dive deep, dive a little deeper into that. It's like, yeah. your upbringing, like, was your, uh, like, like immigrant household what was it like where was your family from yeah so i'm i am like third generation it was it was my grandparents um no probably my great-grandparents immigrated i believe and then my my grandparents grew up in texas um okay. but yeah Hispan i'm hispanic hispanic household and then my grandparents growing up in texas actually my so that my mom was very much acculturated to a point where in the area of Texas, it was more like don't speak Spanish, fit in where they were living. So my mom was born speaking fluent Spanish oh. and then lost at about like six or seven years old, right when you go into like elementary school, right? Okay. Um, and then never really spoke it to us. So I speak very little to, to know Spanish, which is it's sad for me yeah. right now, but, but that's okay, my wife is fluent and my wife is Egyptian, but she's fluent in Spanish and Arabic, and so she's the linguist. Wow. Yeah. Um, and But, you know, growing up, we were very much acculturated, and that's where, you know, being, what, third or fourth generation, we were very much just in the American culture. Hot dogs and burgers and, yeah, um, some, you know, some Hispanic food, but it wasn't, uh, you know, very, uh, I guess, where it was like, oh, we're speaking Spanish, and... It wasn't that long ago. And, oh yeah, we saw a bunch of family in Mexico or something. Where yeah, it's like I probably have a couple of cousins, but I didn't hardly see them. So yeah, yeah, we're very much Americanized for sure. Got it. So like growing yeah. up, like what was it like? Like what was like your background? Like was it um, like were your parents? You know, like what did they do? Were they business yeah. owners? Were they, were you guys lived in uh, lived well off, not well off. Yeah, so we're, we're like, I guess I would say, yeah, middle class. I mean, I grew up in a suburb outside of Los Angeles. Um, my my dad, oddly enough, my, from my dad's side to my dad's father owned a business, a real estate business. And I remember going there as a kid and I thought it was, it was really cool. My dad was a real estate agent part time and then was like a, a manager for Ralph's grocery store. So, and then he did, he did, I just remember he was always working. So my dad was always hustling, working. My mom was a stay at home mom, which I know now is like, whoa, three kids. I'm one of three kids and my mom gets to stay home and my dad's working. That's, that's hard to do now in 2020, yeah. um, but not impossible. But, um, so yeah, my mom was, was a homemaker. Um, yeah, grew up, I'm the middle. So I have an older and a younger brother. But yeah, I always remember my dad hustling, which, which unfortunately he was never really there at a young age. So he was kind of like a weekend dad, 
here and there dad, but just always working to provide, you know? Yeah. And, and that goes back to that sense of like, money was the number one input, right? Yeah. Where it wasn't, it wasn't hugs, it wasn't being there, it wasn't making sure to have dinner with us or tuck us in the bed and give us that other forms of love. Money was the primary love language, right? Yeah. Which doesn't always translate for everything else. So, so yeah, there, it was, it was imbalanced for sure, which that imbalance then had ripple effects into the future. So, yeah. So yeah, but, but overall I can't complain about my childhood. Good right. childhood, had everything I needed, everything I wanted. Yeah. Good, good childhood for sure. So like having all that, you know, cause I relate to that as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I guess I'm first generation actually. Oh, cool. Um, my parents came here, immigrated here from, from Hong Kong when they were 20. Cool. Um, they're now like, and they, they had nothing. Work wow. and work, save, work, save, invest, save, work. Yeah, and until like, you know, my mom opens a shop seven days a week from really? 8.30, 9 o'clock to 10.30 at night. What, are, what kind of shop? It's a restaurant. Cool. Like, there's like Chinese food um, and stuff like that. And it was, it's like a fast food, like steam table stuff. Mm. But she's had that for a while. And she, I think she likes doing it. Every, every, People are probably like, oh my God, like, you know, because she's like 70. Whoa. Um, my parents are 70 and they're like still doing it. Wow. And people are like, don't, like, don't they, like, don't they want to retire? And I'm just like, I don't, I think because there's a community there. Right. There's friends, there's family friends, they come by, and there's mm. a place to hang out. Mm. Um, that, you know, my mom enjoys it. You know, mm. she feels like, I think there's a sense of purpose there. Yeah. Um, for my dad, he was always like working, like mm -hmm. hard labor, construction, plumbing, uh, installing like fire sprinklers around mm -hmm. around the city of San Francisco, and he was uh, uh, he and then he eventually had his own have his own business. Now mm -hmm. he still has it. He's still doing it, but he's not on the That's field. Great. He just still runs it. But I right. just remember, like you said. You know he's he's making money and he's he's providing like financially mm -hmm. materially um but not getting like the amount of time you know me spending right. time with my dad or my mom too because mm -hmm. she was in the shop was really like hanging out with them at their jobs right at their you know me and my dad want to hang out i'm following him to the construction sites right you know by the way that's like super illegal for a little kid oh, to go yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but you know i went and i'm um that was our hangout and then if i want to hang out with my mom i'm i'm like i'm literally like at the shop mm. i'm like standing next to her as she's like cooking you know right. and we're talking that's that's really like what hanging out was like right um and i just remember you know going back to kind of what you said was like yeah there was a feeling of everything was provided life was good i don't mm -hmm. regret it and had a good upbringing mm -hmm. but i didn't have that like like nurturing that that right. love right. in in other ways um and it's like yeah speak to me about that like do you because i for me like i've always felt like because i don't have that mm -hmm. like i i I grind and I hustle today and I'm seeking, and this is where the whole freedom came from mm -hmm. or part of that picture of the financial and the time freedom is because I don't want that. I don't want that life from my parents. Like I don't want the same thing. Um, although I, I admire what they did a hundred percent, but it's sort of like, no, I, I, I when I have kids, like I want to be there. Right. You know, I want to be there every step of the way, mm -hmm. you know, like every single day. Mm -hmm. I just want to be there. Yeah. Um, I want to be there to just watch them grow up. I want to be there to nurture them, to take them on vacations or, or, yeah. or have fun with them and just mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah, and just enjoying that. But also having time so that I can like go back home, go back right. to see my parents, live with them and, and be there for them as much as I can. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah, talk to me about that. Like, oh, yeah. Do you have like, any siblings, too? Or I have one older sister. One older sister, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, oh, man, really, I have a daughter who's five. 
and um, my wife, we, we were married, but definitely had her way sooner than we thought. I wanted that plan as well, like, oh, let, you know, let's see where our professions are going, then we'll have kids, and let's take time. Nope, it was like nine months into our marriage, got my wife pregnant, um, and so it happened a little sooner where I was like, whoa, okay, now we're not only figuring out our stuff and, and continuing our career, now we're going to have a whole new life to take care of, which was a total shift. Um, but now being this entrepreneur and having a more flexible schedule, I, you know, you look back in hindsight and go, wow, this was a really cool series of events. And had my daughter not been born at that time, I probably wouldn't be in this area where I am. Definitely wouldn't be sitting here with you, yeah. I, I would assume. And it was like, whoa, it, it set off a chain reaction, total different path, which was a blessing for sure. Um, but now, I, we, my wife and I are very conscious where we did a we did a unique um, you know parent involved preschool that's also very conscious about what they eat and not spraying pesticides and we get to work there and have jobs um, all throughout you know my wife and I would rotate our shifts as far as when we're working in the office of so, you know the days I'm in the office my wife is home the days she's in the office I'm home and so one of us is always with us you know we do have a we do have a nanny here and there but. Um, you know, the whole point of having a child, I was like, we didn't have a child so someone else could raise that child. Mm. We had a child so we could raise our child, right? So we're always, always family dinner, uh, pretty much always family breakfast, weekends, you know, or in the week we have at least one family day. My daughter still come, sometimes comes to the office to get to hang out there. That's awesome. Sometimes, you know, especially with the whole um, virus thing going on right now and it's a big shift and schools are closed and everything going on so that that was a big shift so but overall we're very conscious of not being work 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 and not giving that true wealth to our daughter right mm. of, of knowledge and love and mental health and physical touch and so we're yeah it's a, it's a big big game changer we're seeing her really thrive wow. um, yeah, and I wish I had that when I was younger. Right? Yeah. It's so weird. It's cool. Yeah. It, it's really it's, weird. It's it's weird. Mm -hmm. Like growing up, you didn't have that, so you, you it just is. you just it's like an emptiness. It is. And and it's like I and I almost say sometimes it almost <laughs> kind of uh, it consumes me a little too much, like just thinking about it, because I'm like, mm -hmm. for me, like. Uh, like I'm working kind of relatable to you, but like I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm trying to establish, you know, everything so that like the rest of my life, I'm like, I'm good. I, I don't, I, I can be wealthy, you know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of time. Um, but in doing so, I know where my, I know why, because mm -hmm. I know the family that the, 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 my upbringing gives me this perspective of, what I want and what I don't want. Right. And then also like instilled in me is this like this work ethic to, to do it. Um, and then, you know, I see the vision of why to do it and how, how powerful it is. But not only that for myself, like you said, like, like, Hey, I can, I can, when I have this time of resource, I can go and impact the world. I can go, I can right. go make this Costco size, you know, like you right. said, this, big like holistic health center like my vision is to have it like in all 50 states and then spread it yeah. across like the world yeah. and make it affordable because we mm -hmm. as we know like my mentor always says um dr cone he says uh health goes to those who can afford it which is mm -hmm. sad but it is kind of true because if you think about like true. organic foods right it's like i mean this is like not like if you're farming and you know how to farm and you know how to grow stuff but like, like urban environment, mm -hmm. if you want organic foods, they're going to be a dollar, two dollars more per pound. Right. If you want to get care, like in our facility, like get holistic health care, mm -hmm. like you're, you're probably, you guys are probably like charging mostly cash, right? Some yeah. insurance. And we're actually moving more towards cash just right. because we can't give quality through insurance. The, the insurance model is not built to say we're going to give you preventative lifestyle medicine quality. It's like, it's more quantity. It's like, get your medication in 15 minutes and get out. 
Right. And that and it just doesn't make sense. So no. yeah, total I I totally agree and it's it is that like how do we yeah, to get that quality to get to the root cause, it costs money uh, for people. And a lot, there's so many people that don't have that extra income. But one of the shifts we want to help people make is how much are you spending for your health insurance? Mm. And whatever, I mean, whatever that is, if it's, it, or if you're getting covered California, or maybe you're spending six, eight, I know patients who spend over $1,000 a month on their health insurance. And I'm like, are you healthy? So, so <laughs> why are we calling it health insurance yeah. if you're if it, they're not even insuring that you're healthy, right? It's, it's disease it's, insurance. Disease insurance. Disease care. It's disease care. It's sick care. You know, whatever you want to call it. So you're paying X amount of dollars for sick care. Why don't you spend a fraction of that for health care, like true health care, right? Right. And I think once people get that shift, and that, that's a message we want to help get out there and help you know the Cone Health Institute which which I mean we're all allies here because yes. we're, we're part of this movement that's saying no one's healthy doing that yes. right or I mean there, there's some good with Western medicine but yes. we shouldn't it's like a hammer and we're using a hammer for every single problem mm-hmm. oh you have this problem let's use a hammer oh you this it's hammer hammer so one size fits all and we're just going like, no, that doesn't make sense to right. a lot of health professionals. And I think it's growing. The number is growing of health professionals going, this doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Right. And it's very, and it, what doesn't make sense to me is how profitable oh, it is crazy. still. You know, it's just, yeah. It, yeah, that's the bizarre part where it's like, um, you know, people always, like, they always like, oh, you charge cash, I can't afford it. And like, right. and I'm like, like really like you can't afford you can't you you're saying like $75 for your care which is what we charge here mm-hmm. for per treatment you're saying like that cost you're looking at that cost which mm-hmm. may seem like a lot to some people but it's like what's the value right what are you getting like right. what like how like just opening up your life to find out like what's going on right and getting the answers that you need you know so what if you just come once but you're getting so much information in that where you're you can tailor your life to be like okay i know that this is deficient in me and let me find out let me use the internet and just be like hey what's going to strengthen like this organ or what's going to strengthen this it's like there's so much value behind behind the care um and it's just like the educational piece Right. You know, it, it's hard. It's perspective, right? It's perspective. For and sure. for a lot of it, I think um, it goes back to like that instant gratification. Yes. Like we we we're we're so trained on that. We're so conditioned. Uh, just you know, to to have to here's a pill, and it'll alleviate something, um, or like you know, like kids nowadays, where you're like here here's an iPad, and it's just like boom, like all of a sudden. All is that good. dopamine, oh, and that dopamine, oh, right. yeah, okay, Ooh, yeah. And then we were talking earlier about Pavlov's dog, Dun- yeah. And it, 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 it's so funny you mentioned this because I've always, I almost feel like shaking that prescription bottle, that sound of the pills is like that conditioning of like, oh, I feel, I feel better already. I got my pill that I need, and it's like, oh, it's like that, that is. It's just so easy, right? It's, it's again, it's, it's like eating that donut when you're hungry. It's, mm. it's looking at the iPad when you're bored. It's getting that pill when you're not feeling good. It's all this, it's a quick fix, but man, it, it's so shallow and it, and it doesn't get to that root. You're like, yeah, I totally feel you, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Why is it hard as so, humans? Man, why? You know, I think, I think, because I still feel it too. Oh, totally. Yeah, like we still, it's not like we're preaching this, but we're not feeling but like, yeah, it would be like, sometimes you're just like, you just feel uncomfortable and you want to get out of this discomfort, right? you know? But uh, I always say like, get comfortable with the uncomfortable because that's where you're going to grow and stretch and totally. be better. And being uncomfortable allows you to be like better, allows you to have a totally better good. life in, any, in every single aspect. Yeah. But but yeah, like why, why is it? Why is it that why? we, oh, man. Yeah, we do that? Question. You know, I mean, if you look back, I think in evolution, I think 
we are mammals, we're animals. I think in a survival situation, you want to do the least amount of work to get the biggest reward. Mm. And unfortunately, I think food companies, pharmaceutical companies, uh, technology companies, they know this. Yes. And they're banking on this. So I think this is where, I think the way we combat this is with knowledge of this, right? The only way we're gonna combat this, if you're not aware this is happening, so I could speak to more the food aspect of, there's literally a term for this, I don't know if you've heard of the bliss point. Mm. So the, there's, the, there's a term called the bliss point of food and food manufacturers, food companies, spend lots of money, uh, what, what is it called? Um, research and develop R and D, right? Yeah, huh? They spend a lot of R and D to find their products bliss points, whether it's a chip or cookie or yogurt or whatever. It's a, it's a right point where there's just amount enough, a right amount of fat and sugar and 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 salt. Wow. Where it's it's just addictive enough where they keep wanting more. Wow. So there's there's millions of dollars being spent to exploit our our you know natural evolutionary physiology wow. and i guarantee facebook does the same so we keep oh. going. instagram oh, does the same make sure you get the likes and oh now we can do stories and the, and it's like oh highlight that and and so I, they're spending money to exploit these things yeah but what's really cool is when you get that knowledge that knowledge trumps these mm. and then you can give it with that knowledge you can start to regain some of that self-control Yes, getting your power back. Get your power back. Because if you don't know, if you don't know your Pavlov's dog, you're going to stay Pavlov's dog, right? Yeah. Here. Ding, ding, ding. And just start salivating. Right? <laughs> yeah. Shake, shake, shake. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I'm the, right here, just a, a, like a lap rat. Right. Crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, man. And, oh, man. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. But it, on top of the knowledge, there's still a lot of work. And I think oh, like, yeah. because because of the society we live in now, yep. where we're just so, everything is just so quick, right? You wanna find information, Google it. You wanna get food, we'll shoot DoorDash it, right? You wanna, right. <laughs> and it's just like everything, information and all this stuff is so readily available. Um, like how, but for me, like I always, think like yes we have to get like uncomfortableness right like discomfort is really where we start to thrive and yep. heal um and go through you know you think about like working out yeah you gotta get you can't just i'm sorry but you can't go in there and half ass things and expect great results it just doesn't work like that but and same yep. thing with business you can't go in there show up do the bare minimum, expect your business to be thriving, right? So, so many things in life are, are yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it does require so much the work, like on top of the knowledge and awareness. Right. How do yeah, we get people to that beginning. work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How, how does that, I don't know. I mean, like, you, because of what you do, because you work with people with their nutrition and, you know, right. as a registered dietitian, you know, I would, like, I'm assuming you do work a lot more with like the behavioral aspects of like what yeah. people do mm -hmm. um so like yeah like how do we how do we use that how do we use that facebook uh drug company like mm -hmm. r d for out for like what we're trying to achieve in reverse, reverse engineer yeah. Yeah, ju like judo it right like <laughs> yeah. use that energy and just put it right exactly back. so oh totally man yeah and, and that's something luckily we learned that in undergrad and at least at least at that time I was an undergrad, they had the, the, the foresight to kind of realize it. We called it motivational interviewing, right? Where you're mm. motivation, motivating your client and using their own energy for that, right? So um, it is, what I find works really well is micro steps. So it's basically micro steps of like, okay, maybe you have heart disease, you have hypertension, you have diabetes, you have IBS, you have all this stuff going on. I just want you to add some spinach to your eggs in the morning. And it's really, it's really tailoring it to the individual. Something I say is, you know, we're all fingers or we all look like humans, but when you look closer, we have individual fingerprints, right? So mm -hmm. as a, any, any good health professional will work with their patient and, and make an individualized approach and go, 
I see you're really motivated, so I'm not gonna make it that easy. I'm gonna give you a lot of really great things. I'm gonna find what you're really interested in. Maybe you just wanna look better on Instagram. I'm gonna, I'm gonna judo that, I'm gonna use that, right? Maybe you wanna, I don't know, last longer in bed and you're having erectile dysfunction. Cause you're <laughs> so you know, whatever it is, yeah. use it and, and be like, hey, did you know in this study, um, men eating more fiber was actually shown to increase the blood flow, you know, whatever. Yeah, that, yeah, and that's yeah. where you use that knowledge and they go, oh wow, that's what I want. Right. It's almost like the bell, ding, 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 that's what I want. But they become, <laughs> maybe they're still the Pavlov's dog, but it helps them actually get to somewhere better. It's leveraging right? it. Leverage it. And so, yeah, I totally do that all the time. And it's, it's yeah. finding what that leverage is. What, what is their goal? What's their motivation? But, you know, in our setting, in the outpatient setting, and I guess what we do, we usually find the people that, especially with IBS, we're talking about SIBO or ulcerative colitis, They've tried so many things. They're motivated by just how horrible they feel. They go, man, I feel, I feel terrible. You know, what do I do? I'm at, I'm at my like wit's end. What should I do? And they're, they're so willing to try new things. Mm. And, and once we get them to try, they start feeling good. And that's enough to keep that momentum going. And that's where I, honestly, my specialty is not working with you know, the house mom who just wants to lose that 10 pounds and yeah. has nothing else going on. That, I'm not really excited by that, but the patient who has IBD and has had it for 10 years and is in really bad shape, I want to help that person get to like a good place and then they can build from there. And then they can work with you or, or yeah. then, you know, that's awesome. Building, building, building. I love that. I love it. I love how you say that you 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 like working with with those. Where I like I'm like I like working with the people who like like yourself. Like we were just mm -hmm. treating you, and I'm like, man, there's nothing going on. I'm like I'm excited because I'm like I want to get you to the what? next level. Yeah. To that I want to give you that slight edge mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. Whereas like there's many practitioners, and it's all dependent on what you want. And there's I'm, I know a lot of practitioners are like I want the sickest of the sick. Yeah. You know I want. I want it to be you like your my mentor would say. I want the medical failures, right. and I want like you to see like a million people, right. and I'm like your last resort right. because you're gonna listen to me. <laughs> I love that. that's that's yeah. right. I really like that. I'm a marriage of a lot of different things, but I'd say that's my that's a good core of what I really like. That's awesome, especially with SIBO. Because there's so many, like with the low FODMAP, we, we developed a protocol that doesn't use low FODMAP, mm. that isn't very restrictive, um, where I, I've seen so many people just get confused by the low FODMAP approach. They it's a really cookie cutter approach. Cookie cutter approach, yeah. and they, they get in so much trouble, and then the, the practitioner doesn't know about histamine reactions and yeah. oxalates, and, and they go, oh, well, okay, here's another round of antibiotics, and it's just like, yeah. make it worse, and so, yeah, I, I, we're doing it so different and I love that and it's helping people and I love that. Where it's like, wow, I'm, I'm at the lowest of my lows and I'm seeing the light now. Yeah. It's like, great. You're just going to keep going from there. Yeah. yeah. I see a common theme, like mm -hmm. with a lot of things that you're, you're mentioning and the mm -hmm. common theme is like, be different. Yeah. Is to do things differently. True. And to do things that are different from the norm. Right be a different person than the norm. I love right? that. Like, Especially when the norm is not yielding promising results, oh, right? God. Like what has the norm gotten us to right now? I mean, it's great. I mean, I love our iPhones and the technology, but sure. we're going deeper than that. What is the norm? Or what is it? 50% of the US population has at least one chronic disease. Right. We're seeing, I mean, still heart disease is still going up, diabetes, yeah. is going, like what has the norm gotten us to? You know, we're getting more genetically modified uh, seeds, we're spraying more pesticides, we're getting super bugs, super weeds, we're, we're in a pandemic right now. Right. What, what has the norm gotten us? I would say we're public health failures. Wow. I would go as far to say that. Yeah. And if we're going to keep doing the norm that got us to be public health failures, that's, that's the definition of insanity, right? Yes. So, it, was it him that who said it? There you go. Yeah. yeah, Albert Einstein. Yeah. What is the the definition of insanity? Is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Right. 
Look at that. Beautiful. That's crazy. I had that in my subconscious. I, I know, saw yeah, yeah. out of the corner Your of my eye. Your reticular activates. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's that that's so true. I've always yeah. um and I think like for me like growing up uh and I'm, I I I don't talk about this often cuz I always get sensitive like I feel like I'm like being condescending somehow. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm learning a lot to be unapologetic about it, which is why like this podcast is really like meant to be like deep talks and and things. It's like Love that. like I've always felt different. I like that's just I don't know. Maybe every other kid felt that way, but I've always felt like I was different. I didn't mm-hmm. get along. I didn't do the normal things that people did. I didn't mm-hmm. enjoy the normal things. It was like mm-hmm. the more that people did something. I, I went away from that. Like, I'm like, whatever you did, I'm gonna go over there. Because right. I'm like, there's something that I, just doesn't vibe with me there. But like you said, the norm, I always say this, is the norm, if you look at the norm, it's like, oh, well, like, like I think my parents say this too, to me. They're like, well, why don't you just wanna be like a normal kid? You know, I tell them all these dreams and goals and stuff I have, well, you just wanna be a normal kid. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is what normal people do. This mm-hmm. is what the majority is is gotten. This is the result. So much chronic disease, mm-hmm. so many health issues. Mm-hmm. Every like, what is it? The stats is something like like anybody over sixty five. Like most of them are on at least one pharmaceutical oh, drug. Oh yeah. Right. So many things going on with their health. What about now? Let's talk about their wealth their financial status majority of people are in debt are they have student debt they have loans they have mortgage payments they have all these things going on they have one stream of income Mm -hmm. you know and then they're like reliant on like the stimulus checks and the sba grants now and then it's sort of like it's like look at what's happening like the moment you shut that faucet off People are now like freaking out right. about like super stressed out about their financial status or, or like situation. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so people, most people don't have health and they don't have wealth. And I'm like, why do you want to be the norm? Right. Why do you want to follow the crowd? Right. Completely agree. And I, I would even go as far as to say it's, this isn't by accident. Mm. You know, I, I honestly feel we're, we're too smart as a race, uh, you know, as a, as a human race to have this all happen by accident. It's unfortunate, but when you, when you take these skills away from people, when you, when you kind of, um, I guess, what is it? I guess just overall create this illusion of food isn't free, energy isn't free, health isn't free. And, and you make people reliant, you are then what? You're controlling. Mm-hmm. And then that means there's, there's those that control and those that are being controlled. And then you have this, this basically this duality of power. Yes. And that's what I think, just like people are addicted to heroin and, and cocaine and food, there's people addicted to power. Yes. And there are these people that are addicted to power who are working, just as we're working to try and say, grow your own food. Be healthy, get solar panels, yes. or use wind energy, and that there's just as many people, unfortunately, trying to keep this dynamic of power. Yeah, and that's where this is where people get really uncomfortable. Oh man, and they don't like to think about this. You know, there's a lot of my friends and family don't like to think about this. Right. No, who could, who could do that? Why would <laughs> why the government would it do that? It, or there's no trillionaires or zillionaires who would want to do that no what are you you're being crazy you're a conspiracy theory. yeah yeah oh you're crazy and it's like but then these are these are the same people that will open up the bible and talk about the devil and this and, so it's like you believe in the devil but you don't believe in these sinister people in real life right so it's really odd to me but um but yeah when you when you start to touch on that i kind of take it a little a little bit deeper or so, or so however you want yeah, to say it. Yeah. And I would even say there's people actively doing this because it, it makes no sense. It, right? Right. Like, no. It makes no sense. With what's going on now, right? especially, and, uh, and it's probably worth like talking about because it's like, <laughs> it's relevant to the times. It's right. like, you know, 
and it's not to say like everybody is out there oh, no. the, but it's like no, there no. are the powers that be and there are there are, there's shadiness shady there's things that are not making sense and it's sort of like i'm not saying everybody go outside and start like protesting and rioting oh, no, no but it's like question question right learn what did this guy do Question. Albert Einstein. I mean, that's a be a scientist, be a citizen scientist, be a be a true health. Just in, as a health professional, question those labs and dig deeper. Do that in all aspects of your life. And um, yeah, I think I think yeah. Even right now, I mean, yeah, not everyone. I'm not when I say the government and all that. It's like no, not everyone. The government is out to get you or be in control of you. But there, there's people that do want this. It's it's easier. It's easier to control people, um, to, in some perspectives, right? right? But, um, but yeah, what's really cool is is that it's so empowering when you do kind of break free a little bit, like like you're saying. Yeah. When you do like there's this whole hashtag even like food is free, right? Mm. When we think about it, what do you need to grow food? Seeds and dirt and water and right. air and sun. It's like oh, well, I, I can have all that, right? Um, so just applying that to so many different aspects is so uplifting for sure. I, I think that's so powerful by the yeah. way. When you realize like for instance, like like how I say like if you don't know how to do that, mm -hmm. now you're like reliant on buying your food. Right. Right? Like for me, like I don't I don't know how, I don't know mm -hmm. anything about being like botany or, or like growing, growing anything yeah, yeah. i'm like dude like i've i've probably failed more than like i've had succulent plants that died you know like that's yeah, yeah. not a good sign for right, me right. you know i've also grow, grown up in san francisco so it's like i've always been a city boy so that's right. why that's my excuse but but i can learn mm -hmm. but like for me it's like it's it's that it's i don't know how to grow my own food mm -hmm. So I'm reliant on going to Whole Foods, going to Mother's, going to an, like an organic place to buy like better ingredients, you right. know, for as, as my food source, mm -hmm. right? Um, and luckily, like I know what to look for. So like mm -hmm. I'm seeking those out, you know, and let's just say Whole Foods went away. Let's just say, let's say all organic foods went away. Like all produce went away right. and it was all like, so like this happens. I don't know if you've like been in, I'm sure you have, but like if you've been in other parts of the country, we live in a bubble in like California, oh. especially Southern California. But yeah. yeah, other parts of the country in the middle of somewhere, like mm -hmm. I remember just going into a store and I'm like, what? is going on yeah. there is no fresh food in here right everything is packaged you know like it, it's just it it was so like scary right. i i felt like literally i like like i didn't have power like i didn't have freedom to live how i want to live mm -hmm. you know so what if all those things went away because all it takes is to say oh we found we found coronavirus in in, in celery in organic celery Right. Guess what's happening to all the celery in, in the U.S.? It's going to be gone. gone. And then they're going to be like, oh, the celery contaminated the broccoli. No more broccoli. Right. And then the carrots and all that. And then now you're like, shoot, we're stuck to crackers and chips. and Or whatever. Or whatever. <laughs> can. Well, I mean, can I mean just look at the toilet paper, right? Oh, or, yeah. Or what if, yeah, what if uh, truck drivers are shut down because they have coronavirus or another, whatever other virus or whatever could happen. Yeah, whatever could happen. I mean, you just, you've seen how people hoarded toilet paper. What if everyone started hoarding food and you're like, wow, there's no food whatsoever at the grocery store. Thank goodness that the supply chains are still going for a lot of these grocery stores. Right. And we put an emphasis on like grocery stores are still, you know, much needed. I forgot what the actual terminology is. What is it? There's or essential essential yeah, yeah they're yeah. essential thank god you know of course food is essential but what if the supply lines are broken right what if what if we didn't have that industrial uh food uh, food methods right to bring in all that food then we'd be in big trouble right? right this happened in world war ii that gave rise to victory gardens that's where people's backyard gardens were supplying 40 percent of the food for the entire country so we know we have that power. We've done it before. Um, it's just it's just we lost it. We forgot. 
Mm -hmm. That was that was a long time ago. That was what at least two, three generations ago when we're talking about the young TikTokers we're seeing yeah. now. I doubt they remember that. Um, but it's it's there's still people alive today that remember yeah. and can bring it back. I think it is, is we just can't lose it. And that's not to say Whole Foods is great, mothers as great. I love mothers for sure. Yeah. Um, but it, it, there has to be a balance, you know, we can't yeah. be so reliant. Reliant. We can't. We gotta have our power. We, we gotta, gotta learn. Gotta learn. Gotta and I grow, I love to grow. I'm growing like three different varieties of kale, I have three different varieties of spinach. I have a moringa tree, a fig tree. Um, awesome. uh, yeah, it's just so it's so cool. I love. Yeah, to grow. and yeah. see, that's that's like, like if we took away all the, it, let's just say they clo they shut down the grocery stores. Yeah, you would be like, well, no problem. I I kind of I know how to grow. For at least a lot. Of, I, I have mean, a yeah. lot of kale and some fruits. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm okay. But, yeah. But, but yeah. like, but you do like you'll be okay for a while. Worse yeah. is like somebody like me. I'd be like, oh my god, I'd be like no, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's that it's that it's taking that like you said, taking that power back, right? Right, and then having that knowledge, but also like applying it totally. And then like that's true freedom right there. Totally, that's true freedom. It's true. It's true wealth. It's uh. So there's a wonderful. Um, organic gardening activist Ron Finley he coined the where he coined the phrase of like growing food is like printing your own money that's what it is man. <laughs> it's like growing yeah. food is like printing I your love own it money. you're literally just going to plants and the money is great like I, I it's always so funny how parents or used to say or I, I'm sure they still say money doesn't grow on trees right. it's like yes it does what if you had a, a tramoya tree or avocado tree or man I mean that's money right there. Oh man. yeah, avocados. That's like, avocados are. Yeah. Do you call it green gold, man? <laughs> you have an avocado tree which would do really well in Southern California. You have green gold, man. That's like that's better than money. <laughs> yeah. In, some, in my opinion, but um, <laughs> yeah, you can grow money. So it's, it's just when you when you flip the switch and go, I can grow money. Boom, power. Right. That's it. And it's not necessarily the. The, it's not the word money, but it's like it's the meaning behind all of it. It's not like the definition of money, but it's like right. the meaning of what money can do for you, right. what it can provide. But right. you can you can get that just simply by growing, growing. and that's awesome. So how does how does one start? How does one start that's learning? Awesome. Oh man, pick. Um, you know what? I I'd probably you pick something easy, and I'd probably say the easiest the easiest plant you can start growing is mint. It's considered even like a weed, and so if it, you know if you can grow mint, and then you can start making, you can make your own mint. We make a yummy like mint nice cream. Nice. Throw mint in your water so it's nice and fresh. You you know put it in your mouth and chew on it when you need to. Hey, there's so many uses of mint. You drink yeah. it as a tea, and you start to go, whoa, I love, I love it. And mint is really easy. So I say start with herbs. Mint is like one of the easiest ones, um, and just yeah, start start small yeah and keep going and then you'll see i really enjoyed growing this mint i found value from this mm. when you find that value it becomes addicting almost like a video game right yeah, yeah. Ooh, this is fun I'm, I'm good at this if you grow that mint you're like ah uh, you know I'd, I'd rather find value in cycling or you know whatever fine but a lot of people I find, they get that green thumb, right? They go, whoa, I did really well with this mint. Yeah. Now I'm gonna grow some sage. Mm. Oh, I did really well with this. Now I'm gonna, and it just starts to snowball from there. Right. So even if you start with one thing like mint, you get a feel for it and you just keep going. That's awesome. Yeah. So like for apartment living. So yeah. like for me, like I live I live in an apartment. Yep. I. I I have a balcony. It's not that. It's not that big, mm -hmm. but like, and I know we need sunlight. Yeah. So you know, can I? Is that possible? Like, totally. I mean, um, so you could do container gardening in your balcony, and okay. it is. It's, it's doing a little bit of research of seeing how much sun you have. Um, so then that will determine what you want to grow. But even even simpler than that, you can go on Amazon and buy the microgreens kit. And even if you just grow microgreens, right? So if you get some broccoli seed, you can do this on your on a kitchen counter that gets maybe a little bit of sunlight, not even direct sunlight, and you start growing these microgreens. 
and then you use them in your smoothie. Wow. I'm sure you know about like sulforaphane and yeah. broccoli microgreens have yes. more sulforaphane than broccoli itself. So, I mean, these microgreens are like a powerhouse of nutrients, so easy to grow. You don't even need a balcony. That's like your kitchen counter and you're growing food and you're seeing these little plants grow and you get to pick them and eat them. And, and if you like that, then you move out to your balcony, right? Yeah. And yeah, you start It's so there. simple. It's simple. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the new, really, and we're, we're, I think people are incorporating a lot more like plants, right? In their home. Yeah. Um, awesome looking, plants. looking for more like green stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like, I think the next step is really to learn to yeah. learn. It's, it's funny because I say learn, but you, you think about it, you're like, well, back in the day, everybody knew how to grow everybody stuff, knew, right? right? You know, that's all you knew, but it's right. like, we've gone so far away from it because right. we were so reliant, we're so reliant on the new technologies mm -hmm. on other people, which is great. I mean, like we formed like great civilization from oh, yeah. that, but it's like, I think, I think it is time to go back and, and learn these primal things, I, I, I guess. Or, or Yeah, and I, I always see it as um, taking what we've learned in modern day and applying it to the good from the past, right? So a great example is when I go to a park, I'm like, why isn't a lot of these plants edible, right? So a function of the park is space for people and maybe a playground for kids. And then there's, there's so many spaces that wow, we could put an avocado tree there. Right. We could put mandarins and oranges. These bushes that look nice can be rosemary and thyme. And mm. why, why not? And so that's wow. where it gets to edible landscaping is we don't even need to, even if we didn't want to say, you know, I don't feel like growing my own food. That's great. What about the city is already maintaining this landscape. You right. see the gardeners there and they're right, watering. Right, right. Why wouldn't it be edible? So wow. it's like even simple things like edible landscaping, which is we're already putting in the work and the yeah. time and money. Why not give it a double benefit if it can still look nice, yeah. serve a function and be edible? Little things like that. Oh, that's yeah. it, literally you change one thing, but it could be so profound. So profound. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I mean, no. See, yeah. like this is the lack of awareness that a lot of people have. Right. So think of think of the parks, think of just the medians, think of yeah. anything your HOA or city already maintains. Why wouldn't it be edible or serve a better purpose right. or be medicinal, like medicinal herbs right. Right, or something like that? Why not? And it's just again, it's the the three things you talk the lack of knowledge right that knowledge just isn't there right, right, so right. these negative aspects are running amok but if you put that knowledge it'll kind of contain and right. wow we can make something really cool yeah from that. but yeah because not having that knowledge it would have been like easily like I would have been thinking like oh my god like we're 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 like we're living in cement walls and we're reliant mm -hmm. on going to like grocery stores and right. You know, the world, like when the world, when we have the next apocalypse, like what am I going to do, you know, versus yeah. like, yo, you just switch one thing and, and it, this the is possibility stuff I think about, man, like endless. this is like, and what if we created a division in every city that then start, it was like, we call it gleaning. So it'd be like a gleaning division that makes sure these foods get picked donated to a local food bank or or some type of organization that goes out to the community or i guarantee like we could do an adopt like a, a corner right where this this portion of the of the homes adopt this and they get to pick from it yeah or i mean there's so many possibilities yeah, yeah, yeah. where this food would not go to waste oh i love that yeah i love that yeah man it, it would be a game changer it would be because mm -hmm. our our majority of our our food sources are coming from like concentrated places, right? Which is why there's like an E. coli outbreak. It's like there's no more spinach. There's right. no there's no more of one thing exactly in, in across the entire nation. It's mm -hmm. because it came from one little spot. It's, a, it's where, a monoculture system that's reliant on one major water source with one major crop in one major area, and that is bad, right? I mean, for some, we talk about diversity. It's so funny, like diversity is good in the workplace. Diversity is good 
with people. Diversity is good with what you eat, but not the way we grow food. No, nope. it's like, does that make sense? Yeah, we take so, food for granted. Right. You know, like we, diver- we know diversity is good everywhere else in politics, you know, whatever. But when we grow food, no, monoculture. It's wow. Like, like, no. That's profound. Right. That's profound. Yeah, man. That's awesome, man. So it is these, you know, just a perspective shift. That's cool. We got. Oh man, we gotta. <laughs> we gotta keep talking about this. But I want. Yeah. I want to be respectful for your time. We've oh, gone no. pretty long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just. It was awesome. Awesome it was, man. conversation. Um, just to close it up, zip it up, uh, through all that we've said, and make maybe make it relevant to what's going on now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can we all be doing? What are like some 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 a few things that we can all be doing? making sure that we're, we have our power, have our freedom. Yeah. I mean, um, well, yeah, if I had to say one thing it is, it is look at multiple sources for your knowledge, right? I know we have our favorite news station or our favorite blog online or, or whatever it is, or podcast, go outside of that. I would say go outside of that, learn new things, learn from different sources, you know, even, even, Sources where you're like, oh, I don't like this political party. I don't like this person. I don't watch this news station. Check it out. Why mm. not? Humble yourself, right? Yes. Open yourself. Get another perspective. Yes. That's what it's all about. And I think I think that is a big thing we could all do right now. Right. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, man. Awesome, man. Cool. Pleasure. Thank you for have fun. Thank <laughs> you for, for being on here. Talking. Yeah, I know. that's great. That's fun. Cool. I didn't even know if we were going to get this deep but it was just cool here you go awesome until next time um oh let's plug you guys oh yeah bit. yeah uh where can we find your stuff where can we find your material yeah so you, you can find us married to health.com uh we're at married to health on instagram and from there you'll you'll plug into everything else that we're doing um yeah Cool. Awesome. And you got, you got a lot of content on, yeah, you got, you guys have amazing content on like just stuff, just gives people ideas of, of, yeah. of what they can be doing. Yeah. And it's awesome. We're excited. Yeah. If you go to our website, you can subscribe to our newsletter, but we're very active on Instagram. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff in the future. I love it, man. You're a visionary and that's Thank what you. I, that's, so are you. that's what I love. So are vibing, man. It's good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good stuff. It. Do you use like iMovie? Uh, or... I have Final Cut. Oh, cool. Um, I'm still learning how to. Sorry.